With all the shaking and moving that this quarterback class is up to these days in college football, where does Jackson Dart fall among the best quarterbacks in college football? And then where is he going to end up in April when it comes draft time? Let's dig into the tape and talk about this player from a holistic process. Because I think that there's a lot about Jackson Dart that you can make just based off of the Ole Miss tape. The one number one thing I keep coming back to is the quick game operation. I think that that is his number one skill set and one of the reasons Reasons you see quarterbacks like Dart at Ole Miss. You can get into empty personnel, get these two high safety looks from defenses and identify where you want to go with the football. Snaps right here. And then what I love about this simple process is you're just looking in the middle of the field, right? When you spread everything out, it makes it simple on your quarterback. There's a lot of RPOs in this offense, a lot of different ways that they try to get guys moving, whether it's RPOs, play action, or things like that. So you're looking at the middle of the field. Everyone essentially, again, you got that cover two shell, but the one thing you're going to notice is that inside leverage defender here, just a little spot and work to the outside. Dart identifies it quick. You maybe get the ball out a tad quicker to get the receiver another opportunity in space. But at the end of the day, all it comes down to is identifying that quick place you want to go to with the choice route, and then you're able to take advantage of it. You see it all time and time again for Jackson Dart, where he's operating the quick game, whether it is that RPO based where he's hitting guys over the middle of the field, out routes or choice routes in those outside leverage situations. So reading it, identifying it, and then maybe just speeding up the process a tad quicker, you're going to see those be Really, they've been huge problems in the NFL for teams that aren't, you know, Patrick Mahomes, where teams just sit on those outward breaking routes and those RPO looks. So teams that operate it more will have more success with a guy like Jackson Dart. And I think he's an underrated athlete. You know, at 6'2", 225 pounds. Honestly, I didn't know this about his game. I watched him a few times, and I didn't really know that his legs were as good as they are. They kind of remind me of next level when you're looking at Bo Nix uh, with the uh, Denver Broncos. People didn't really expect his legs to be utilized to the level that he's using them. But I think this is one of those points where the play breaks down. It looks like it's supposed to be more of an RPO-based look. You got him reading that left hand side right there and then he like pulls the ball and then he looks to throw it out the where there and there's nothing happening you got blitz coming off so he just goes with it maybe it's made to look that way maybe it's not maybe it's supposed to be a quarterback lead i don't know but it looks more like the play breaks down he just makes a play with his legs and that instinctual nest right there to take off as number zero is coming in right up the middle right here you see right there he's coming flashing across you've got outward number four right here so he's just going to take off and he's going to follow his blockers right here and i love that that instinctual takeoff ability because i do think there's multiple times throughout his process where he will just take off either with his legs or as a design like it is right here and this is a part of his game that i didn't know either where he's just going to put his shoulder down level a defender and then make that touchdown happen out of nothing, really, because he should have been tackled right there. So quarterback draw, he looks one way, he goes forward with those blockers coming out and then leans his shoulder in. That, that instinctualness when the defender is coming in as he's in space making a play, then to just knock him out with that shoulder, that's something that I would like to see more from Jackson Dart. Now, obviously, leading with the off shoulder like he did right there is much better than leading with your court, your throwing shoulder. So just getting better at understanding you, when you can make a play when you don't have to. That is one of those things that I like from him when he knows he's got to go make a play and he can take a hit and, and be physical and tough like that. Good leader, good, tough player, and he operates the quick game very well. And then we're going to get into more of the problems that I have with Jackson Dart but also showcasing some of the things that he does well. This is a two-for-one on Jackson Dart. You see the outside receiver right here, Antoine Wells. He's going to have just go down the middle of the field, all right? And that's where he's looking first, right? So Jackson Dart's going to take a peek in this direction first, and then he's just going to look away. This safety is coming out and down right now. He's still got eyes on the receiver, on Wells. So this is what you want to see, read. You want to read that leverage of the defender he's coming down and really more outward this way he's not backing out really what this should be that he should be throwing this football right now step up into that pocket if you need to and then just take that shot downfield instead he turns it down right now and then he feels a lot of pressure again he still has time to step up and make this play the running back picks up that blitzer off the off the right hand side he can step up into the pocket right here and then throw to the open, streaky Antoine Wells Jr. He doesn't. He takes off on 
to the out to his left, and then he makes a good throw on the move to his receiver who's making a second reaction read. So the play breaks down. He still gets out of the pocket. He makes something happen. But the problem here is, is, is that first reaction. So he's looking. That safety is not backing up. You can see that direction that he's looking at right now. He's looking downfield. Just chuck it up. Throw it downfield. I have a, I have a feeling he doesn't trust his arm. And we're going to get to that in a little bit. But this is a good play. This is a very good second reaction throw. Look at this accuracy on the move. Like, there are times where he's on the move and he could put more velocity on a throw. I mean, obviously, you're generating more momentum than he can from the pocket. I think he feels more comfortable making throws like that in that type of situation outside the numbers or even downfield than he does from the pocket. And that can become a, you know, a crossroads situation, right? Like we just saw. You're not always going to be able to get outside the pocket and make things happen consistently. So the fact that he turns down that throw from sitting in the pocket is a problem. He's got another one right here against Oklahoma with the same receiver. It's the same receiver. Antoine Wells was open multiple times in this football game and should have had a really big day for, for uh, Ole Miss. He's just coming out here and then breaking open across the left-hand side. What they do here is, is nice. You have you know the cross-action motion. Then you have a big boy in the backfield, and he's just going to be pass protecting, coming up, pass protect. And then they have a little quick slant right here across that field. But look what happens to the defense. They all fall apart right there with that play action. Taking the shot down the middle of the field. Look at everybody is coming up right here. You're up, you're up, you're up. He's following down here. And then you have Antoine Wells just streaking open this way, this direction. So this is what I would love to see from him. He is going to look at Wells. He also has a knack to pat the football every single time. And then the pressure feel is number two. You have to be able to step up while you're operating through your reads, right? You have to be able to feel that pressure. So there's the play action fake. He's looking there. Boom. Right now, at this very moment, he sees his receiver. He sees him. He sees him wide open. Throw the ball. He freezes right there. You see the pat? He freezes and he has the pat. That ball needs to be out quicker. It needs to be out faster. It really needs to get through the flat read just a hair faster as well. So a guy who's a senior operating needs to operate a little bit quicker and take some chances down the field when they are wide open. So we'll go back to the beginning of it, and you're going to see, again, there's that wide open player for a touchdown. He just turns it down. That's twice now he's turned down big plays down the field to wide open receivers. And then the first the first time, he made the play with his legs. Second time, pressure gets there, right? He's not stepping up into the pocket. He's standing right there. That pressure feel does not seem to be there all the time as well. So a couple of different things. You see the arm talent getting out of the pocket. It's much better. He's, he does have a good arm on the move. I wonder if he doesn't trust it downfield from the pocket where he can't generate more velocity. And then... We talked a little bit or just in that previous clip about how he feels pressure. Now you have to understand where the pressure is coming from. I don't think he ever saw it, much like he never saw the rusher coming off the his, his left-hand side. This is a little bit different. So LSU is going to bring a, a pressure from the slot, and they have stacked it with a DB in the slot already on top. They're going to blitz and play man coverage behind it. Very simple man coverage here, man coverage here. You've got man here, you got man, and then you have that deep safety right here. So he needs to be able to process. Also, yeah, you got the linebacker, excuse me, on the running back. So let's just pure man coverage across the board and a free rusher, not necessarily free, but off the edge where the running back is coming up and making a play. All right, fine. No problem here. Everyone's got man coverage. Now, knowing your route com concepts and route combinations, if you have a, a pressure blitz coming off, where's your hot route? Where's the guy open over the middle of the field if they're playing man coverage? I need to know where that is to be able to get the football out. Instead, he takes a sack. So we see here you've got the inward in-breaking route from the slot with cushion. This needs to be the throw right here. You've got this coming right open over the middle of the field. He does create separation. I know the referee is there. Ball still has to come out. Doesn't really matter. They will move out of the way. So he needs to be able to process that a little bit quicker and feel the pressure. One, he's looking to the right first. He never even gets back to the left side. So he never saw the blitz coming. Just never saw it coming. They did a good job creeping to the last second. But as this is coming out, and then, you know, he fumbled on the plate, whatever. We're not going to talk about the fumble because you, sometimes when you're not seeing the pressure, you're going to fumble the football. So right here, as the peripheral right now, as the ball's being snapped, this is where you have to kind of feel, you know, feel that. That's what we that, that peripheral, peripheral vision is for at the snap. You have to be able to feel and see that pressure coming off. 
and know it's there. Right now, he's looking in the middle. You should still see that pressure coming, right? And now he looks to the – hard to tell, but he turns his head this way. Body language is that way. So he's coming out right there, and then he gets back to the middle. It needed to be middle first. So we've caught a couple of things here with his, his pocket presence and then the unwillingness to really uncork it downfield at times with guys that are wide open. And those are going to come back to bite. And you just got to be able to progress through it, step up in the pocket, feel that pocket a little bit better, feel the pressure a little bit better, and uncork some throws. Obviously, not every quarterback is going to make those poor decisions or not feel the pressure on every single play. But it's more of a consistent problem. And his accuracy specifically, ball placement goes down dramatically when he is pressured. Muddy pockets and, and having pressure in his face with four with a free rusher. Those affect him more so than a lot of the other quarterbacks in this class. And then like we just talked about with his arm strength, this should be a touchdown. It should be a touchdown. If not, it should be a much bigger play. He gets exactly what he's looking for, right? They want to pull outside pull linebackers underneath. They were going to pull them this way a little bit. Pull them this way. You have that running back out of the backfield. And then you have the safeties out here, right? Too high. They're going to stay too high, especially look at the way that they are managing it, right? You've got outward, outward. So you have exactly what you're looking for down the field. Eyes go right first, back to the middle. Boom, right there. They get the receiver breaking through that next level. This is where he wants to hit it. Lead him out there. Lead him down the field. This should be pretty much a much bigger play, and it's not because he the ball just kind of dies. He doesn't put enough air on it, and then it dies down there, and the receiver has to go make a play. So the arm strength. And I, honestly, I like what he do, does initially. He, going right first, seeing that safety pull out, and then he hits what he wants over the middle of the field. Just got to get a little bit more. I don't know if he really has the drive from the pocket and that arm talent, that arm strength to be able to hit plays like this. So you got to lead guys down the field a little bit more. So choosing what arm slot, what ability he's going to have to throw down the field with on a consistent modality, just got to be able to hit those different plays from all different areas. And this, this, this go ahead and stop harping on, on, on Jackson Dart, right? He's got some things he's got to work on. That's neither here nor there. Ole Miss's offense is very gimmicky they, they do they do a lot of just scheming guys open and quick screens things like that trying to get the ball in the playmaker's hands this is another one of those but he sells this really well going over the number 21 then he comes back to the middle of the field and puts this into a window that's more what i want to see over the middle of the field from jackson dart really nice you know not necessarily an anticipation throw but he's window throwing right your, your window shopping as they like to call it he's going to hit this window and he comes back to the middle and then hip hits his tight end over the middle of the field i love to see that anticipation is not his strong suit as we have now gone through on multiple different times where he sees or he's not really anticipating it as much as he needs to this is a much better showcase of that where he knows it's supposed to be there right number 28 dan stuntsman right there he's going out towards that right hand side of the offense right there and so that window right behind him should be wide open so nice job from dart going right first selling and then throwing over the middle to his tight end for a touchdown kind of trusting the play is going to be there and also trusting his eyes and what he sees this we talked about the read option stuff as well like this is a good operation of that he's reading out first to the right and comes back and layers this over the middle of the field i think that he's got a, a good understanding of how to layer throws not just over the middle of the field but he will layer throws down the field and, and outside the numbers as well he he's much better just with those touch passes i think that he's not just a guy who's going to throw it in there as hard as he can every time he does have different levels to his arm talent so he, a good enough arm good arm talent just question the top end of his ability to really drive throws from the pocket and trust his arm downfield from the pocket as well so you have him him looking out to the right hand side first like i mentioned he's going to be looking while they read out the quote-unquote play action pass with the running back coming up to the middle here Eyes go right first. All right, nobody is going to be open there. That DB is coming down. I come back to the middle of the field. My tight end, because of the play action fake, quote unquote, is going to have these linebackers come up. I can just kind of float this to him and make a nice play and structure over the middle of the field. I don't think you have to worry so much about him throwing over the middle as some of the smaller receivers because I think Ole Miss's offense doesn't always do it a lot. And 
outside of like a guy like Trey Harris, who's not who was not available in this game against Oklahoma, not necessarily the strength of their offense is throwing it over the middle. But these tight ends are starting to play better. I think he's also trusting it more. And you see right there as that linebacker Stutzman once again got sucked up because of that play action. He trusts the touch pass over the middle of the field. And then the last thing we I want to really touch on is getting outside the pocket, but a little bit differently, right? He's going to make a really fantastic play right here on another touch pass where he leaves the pocket, is getting tackled, and the guy's not open. This is another anticip this is an ant anticipation because there's nobody there. It's developing off of instinct, right? He does not check down to his running back who's hot on third down. It's a big play. I know you don't want to. He makes a play out of structure, and he's able to really not die on this play. So you have your hot route, right? Oklahoma's going to blitz. Running back is going to come out to the left flat right here in space one-on-one. -on -one. He has that opportunity to just kind of check it down to him. He doesn't. He just takes off to the right-hand side after being his offensive line kind of being pressed into him. It's still a clean-ish pocket, but he goes out there and makes a play, and he's able to get the ball down the field to his receiver. And again, a touch pass while he's being hit and leads him in front. So I do think that the things that he does well, getting on, getting on the move, operating the quick game, but also trusting his... Right there, you see the, it was more of a wobbler, obviously. Trusting his different levels of whether he's going to throw it in there or put more touch pass on it, I think that he has that to his game as well. So we can vary those different speeds with which he throws the football. Does add a different layer to his, his game. But overall, there's a reason that we have not been talking very highly of Jackson Dart. I don't think that Ole Miss does a great job of developing their quarterbacks because of their offense. It's so college heavy, and it's not always a ton of go through your reads, step up in the pocket, feel that pressure, and then make a throw, make a window throw. You, he doesn't really put the ball in harm's way. He's also not testing a lot of real windows as well in terms of those tight window throws. You see a lot of scheme guys getting open. So... The main takeaways I have from Jackson Dart after watching his performances this season is in big games, you know, when those windows get a bit tighter, he does wait. We, we saw it there, and when he waits a little bit too long to throw the football into those windows that are open, especially wide open, he, it can be detrimental. Taking sacks, getting hit as he's thrown, or maybe fumbling like we saw in that one play that, that he did get sacked, and then he fumbled the football. So... You have to trust your arm, see it, throw it. Sometimes you have to throw with more anticipation, and that's not really in his game right now. I think his best fit is a home like Miami, the Miami Dolphins, where those windows are, you have to play based on timing, you have to trust it, and then you have to be able to play within the structure of the offense. And I think he could do that very well. I think he's more of a day, back end of day two, day three type quarterback, because even as a senior, he's still not doing a ton of those things you want in terms of anticipation and the arm strength down the field and really trusting himself to make those plays when they're there. So all in all, Jackson Dart is a still a developmental prospect with really good athleticism outside the pocket. He can make ha plays happen. He's a good underrated runner. He operates the quick game well, but there's just more to his game that still needs to be unlocked. And maybe he's going to get taken and developed and we'll see that more along his career in the NFL, or maybe it won't. But right now, I don't believe he's really near those guys that are going to be vying for second round, first round draft capital. So that's it on Jackson Dart. Hope you guys got a comprehensive breakdown of the player because there's just so many different quarterbacks, a ton of different conversations about these guys, how they're going to play and what they can really do at the next level that Jackson Dart puts his name into that conversation. So we want to make sure we break him down. If you guys are new to the TDN YouTube page, please make sure to hit that sub button, hit the like on the way out, and I'll see you guys next time.